Hi guys, I'm Schmi and welcome to the appropriately named Porsche Platz in Stuttgart, Germany, the home of Porsche. The museum is right behind me, up here somewhere, and we're going to go in there and check it out shortly. But also, around here you've got a big dealership, and on the other side of the roundabout, that is the factory for the 911. Porsche's iconic sports car is built right over there. Now, I've had a look around before, but off camera. Today, though, in front of me, I can show you this. The new 911 Turbo S Exclusive Series. If I come up towards the box, obviously we've got quite a few reflections here. There are only going to be 500 of these based on the all-wheel drive Turbo S. Power is now up to 607 horsepower, up from the standard 580, and finished with a number of other exclusive options. But I think this has literally just been unveiled like yesterday, um, right here outside the museum, which is in itself a pretty crazy place. When you park a car down here, you can get the reflections um, from the roof on that. But we're going to have a look around see what's going on and in fact something's coming right over there now that is cool yellow 918 e mode silently blasting away and an R8 spider legendary machine. I did not quite get as far as getting into the museum yet when I bumped into the lovely chaps who own this GT3 RS. So Philip, who I'm going to jump in with in a second, and Oliver, how you doing? <laughs> and um, yeah, I've got the key, so let's uh, jump into your rather lovely GT3 RS here. Um, the good old 4 litre flat 6. And this is nice with the yellow harnesses you have in here. And the yellow centre stripe. But, uh, and the white cage. Yeah, beautiful car. Thank you. Cheers. So. There we go. That Excellent. button, compulsory. Excellent. <laughs> so you're usually always driving manual, even though you- Do you know what? I, yeah, I always prefer to just put it in manual, especially in a car like this, because if you're driving along in automatic in here, it would just be in seventh gear at 50 kilometers an hour. That's yeah, boring, right? Exactly. You want so. to liven up the drive. First thing I do moving that stick to the left. Oh yeah. That's so well, and everything else in sport, exhaust and that and that, and TC, that, that and I don't because it's so hard. Uh, you know, if you it's mm -hmm. it's rather too quick. It's sometimes okay, it feels a bit okay, uncomfortable. The jump, For the racetrack, yes. This one is quite too hard. The suspension if you yeah. if you switch it on, Jesus Christ, yeah. If there's a little <laughs> little uh, if it's not bump. straight, a little bump, yeah, then then you're basically you're up in the air with all four wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the feeling. It just feels raw and rumbly. Yes. The way you can feel the whole engine and yes. racetrack ready. Come on, traffic light. Yes. <laughs> How long do we have to see? Now go, we go, go, there go. There we go. Pedal to the metal down there. Now we go. Then. Yes. So good. So good. So it's been a great, great pleasure. Shri, thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you, appreciate it. That was a, a really fun, uh, spontaneous yeah. GT3 RS drive. Excellent. <laughs> thank yes. you very much. Thank you. I guess it becomes the ultimate Porsche museum experience, jumping into the GT3 RS. So a big thanks to Philip for that opportunity. We are now going to head into the museum though, under the, uh, under the cover here, head in and see what's going on inside. Just in time, there's another 918 over there. Spotted that lurking. Off it goes. This starts in a cool way. Where are we going? Well, this is cool. This is where the cars are basically restored and looked after that go in the museum. But this is the most amazing sight. These are cool. Next stop then, we're leaving Porsche Earth behind us. We're heading up to Porsche Heaven. This is pretty cool what's going to be up here. I haven't been for a couple of years, but I do know that some of the greatest Porsches ever are on display in this museum. And down there in the workshop is where they actually restore and look after the 600 cars that the museum own themselves. So let's go upstairs and see what is here today. Did you know 
that the first electric Porsche, with the Mission E coming in the next couple of years, was this from 1898. Hello. Am I in the video? You are in the video. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> was this from 1898 80 kilometer range three and a half horsepower top speed of 25 kilometers an hour and it had a 550 kilo battery back here basically looked like a horse-drawn carriage but that was an electric car there is so much to take in but this is going to be a whistle stop tour first kind of ever Porsche designed car fire engine right there which was sort of revolutionary at the time to have the water pump the tools and the fireman all in one truck then you've got a sort of race car that was nicknamed the Sasha that never actually went into being used, but it won 43 of the 50 races it ever entered. Then this was sort of more normal of the era, um, hence why that race car never really got anywhere. But did you also know that Porsche were involved in the Beetle? So 1950s Beetle there, which is obviously a rather successful car. But this is where we get a little bit further into the storyline and we have the first sort of race car, which was done, named the 360 Cisitalia. Never actually got built, but this thing, which is blowing me away, in 1947, had 385 horsepower from a 1.5 litre, 12 cylinder supercharged engine. That is ridiculous. And it also has that lever there, which introduced the concept of all wheel drive. That changes the power going from just the rear to all four wheels, which is obviously pretty crazy that long ago. Here is Porsche number one. This is the first ever Porsche to wear a Porsche badge. This is a 356. It's a prototype Roadster, uh, mid-engined, um, obviously not how it kind of finished up. Went on to be 80,000 of these built, but that's it. That's the first ever Porsche, this exact one. That must be sort of priceless. I, I couldn't even begin to imagine. It is the first car in the world to wear that brand name, which is obviously now on a different level. That's ridiculous. I cannot even begin to tell you about every single car here, but we've got the early 356s through to sort of Porsche's introduction to racing, all being about lightweight, first sort of formula car. We carry on round, we've got a tractor over there, and then we get here to the first 911. That was actually originally named the 901, but Peugeot had trademarked all three digits or three character numbers with a zero in the middle. So it had to be renamed the 911, and that is the name we still have now. There are a couple of actual sort of interesting things about 911s that have always been consistent. The first is that they always have five instruments um, behind, well, for the driver to see. The second is that the center one is always the rev counter. And the third is that the key goes in to the left. Still a sort of peculiarity or unique feature that we have to this day in the sort of seventh generation 911. More very special race cars and then the 917s. Now this is arguably one of the sort of most iconic race cars ever the sort of super low wide long shape this ridiculous arrow at the back and even this car this exact one the number 21 held a record going 387 kilometers per hour down the Mulsanne Strait at Le Mans that is like insanely fast faster than anything even now um, does there then this one the race pig this is a pretty famous livery on this car 917 basically it was so wide two meters 22 that it was named a fat pig and for a bit of fun they decorated it in the livery that has all the sort of german words for different parts of a pig if you were at a barbecue and cutting one up um yeah pretty uh, unusual but hey it's stuck and it's become an icon since but those three things those three cars, those 917s, just out of this world, both in terms of value, their story, what they achieved, it's just cool. And on the other side is the Carrera RS 2.7 from the early 70s. This is pretty well known, the sort of lightweight, stripped out race version, poster car of that era, worth millions now. It's the only 911 that doesn't have the five dials because for weight saving, they stripped out the clock. Still sort of holder, but no uh, fifth dial there. But that spoiler, that shape, that car, I think everyone knows it and everyone loves it. The Carrera RS. Fun fact, the Porsche 956 in theory has so much downforce that at 321.4 kilometers an hour, it could drive on a ceiling. And in fact, this car on slicks at the Nürburgring Nordschleife ages ago did a time of six minutes and 11 seconds. Think about that. 
This is one of my favorites, the Porsche 959. Technically, their sort of first super sports car. Just a whole host of new technologies introduced to this. Only 292 of them. And I guess this is really the sort of father of what we now have, the 918 Spider. Before that, the Carrera GT. Before that, it was this, the 959. I've only come across a couple of them in my entire filming history to date, but this one obviously looking very nice right here. This police 911, 993, fourth generation, was the one millionth Porsche ever produced. And this was given as a present to the Stuttgart police, who 10 years later gave it back actually to the Porsche Museum to be collected and shown here. But that is the one millionth. They originally only wanted to make 500 cars. That was number a million in 1996. Now this is a special part. Firstly, the Carrera RS 3.8 Club Sport, which just looks awesome. In front of that is the GT1. This is the 1998 996 911 GT1. This is, I think, probably the only one of them. And it is the homologation, the road version of the race car. And it is just mental. That was road legal. That thing can be driven out on a public road, which makes no sense at all when you look at it because it is low, it is long. Look at that front overhang. Look how far forward that comes, that splitter. You'd just be cracking it on everything. It's got that huge sort of scoop on the roof, that ginormous wing at the back. That is literally makes no sense how that can have a number plate, but that is the homologated road version of the 996 GT1. Then we've got the 962, and then here, the race car, the 991, uh, sorry, the 996 GT1. Uh, race car out there taking part and to be honest quite frankly ludicrous um, they were cool they could sort of came along after the McLaren F1 and basically dominated everything but those are just amazing then the Boxster which is kind of an interesting contrast having those two together but the Boxster has been hugely significant for Porsche kind of mixing things up and obviously increasing sales numbers and that's quite fun. That's Sally Carrera from the movie Cars. Lightning McQueen, the main character, fell in love with this car, but this is completely remodeled. It has a shorter wheelbase, it's taller, it has this kind of comic look with the eyes, even the mouth around the front with teeth. And they made that for marketing purposes, but that's quite fun. But then we get a little bit more serious with the GT2, and after that, one of my absolute favorite cars I've ever driven, the legend that is the Carrera GT. That screaming V10, the manual gearbox, everything it stands for, how good it looks, that wing at the rear, the next sort of super sports car that they created, predecessor to the 918 Spider, and just an icon in every way. I think this is one of my favorites, and it's probably one of your favorites too, guys, I am sure. Race car, race car, hybrid race car, Le Mans car, the 919. This was the return to Le Mans car um, that they've gone on to win, obviously, a few times in a row since. But that's another sort of side of this whole story is the racing, the road cars, the racing, the amazing achievements, and all of this, the rarest Porsches ever, all here under one roof. Lastly, but by no means least, the 918 Spider, the Weissach edition. In fact, two of them here, one finished with the Martini livery and then one in the liquid silver paint job, which is just amazing with all the carbon fiber. This of course is, well, the current generation of hybrid hypercar and a really, really special machine. Well, both of them face to face. It set a Nürburgring record of its own at the time, six minutes, 57 seconds. That pretty much concludes the museum. There have been some amazing cars in here, but let's head outside. You cannot hide from awesomeness in here. Just look around at the whole place, the contrast of what we've just seen without moving anywhere. 918s, race cars, fire engines, more sort of older race cars, early 911s, even things like the 997 GT3 RS. This is crazy. Oh, and there's a Sport Classic just there and obviously the KN, which has been pretty important for Porsche. I think pretty much there we have it, the visit to the Porsche Museum today and a pretty spontaneous drive in the GT3 RS, which was really awesome too. That's kind of whistled and blown right by me, but that was really fun. So big thanks to the owner for that. You can see the statue behind me with the new turbocharged 911 turbo in the regular Carrera and Carrera S. 
very confusing, but that was up a couple of years ago. I think I came here literally when they unveiled it. But as always, an amazing visit. To come and see this place, to see the museum. And I've only shown you kind of snippets of what you can see in there. There are so many exceptionally special, rare and valuable Porsches. You would not believe it. And obviously this is such an iconic car company, sports car company with so much history. So it's an amazing place to visit. And I thoroughly recommend if you are ever here, come check out the Porsche Museum. Anyway, it's onwards for us. We have got more places to go. So make sure you're subscribed tomorrow. Well, today we're on the road. There's a lot coming. So make sure you check it all out and I will catch up with you again very soon. Cheers!